Welcome to Top 30, I'm Kristen Smith. And I'm Richard Bacon, and here are your Top 30 stories in 30 minutes. Calls from telemarketers hit a record high in 2017, and most are illegal. The Federal Trade Commission says it received more than 7 million complaints about marketing calls last year. Four and a half million were automated robocalls. That number has quintupled since 2009. About 12% are about debt reduction. It's the most common complaint. More than 4% tell callers they've won a cruise or vacation. Almost 3% are about medical issues. In theory, there's a way to stop unwanted calls by putting your number on the Do Not Call registry. But the FTC says new technology lets marketing companies get around the law. Cheap access to internet calling services and auto dialing programs lets callers hide their location and identity. Well, now technology is also giving consumers a way to stop obnoxious calls. Apps like RoboKiller or the Jolly Roger Telephone Company send calls to voicemail with the pre-recorded message that tricks callers into thinking you picked up. Others like UMail work by blocking the calls. The FTC still recommends consumers sign up for that Do Not Call registry. It helps them track down the call and try to issue fines. Unusual job titles could be keeping candidates from finding employment. The job site, indeed, says many companies post job listings with quirky titles when trying to convey a fun corporate culture or make a clearly boring job sound more interesting than it is. The five most popular terms are rock star, guru, ninja, genius, and wizard. The artificial intelligence company Textio analyzed job postings and found the word genius made women, minorities, and people over 40 less likely to apply for jobs. Removing that kind of language from job titles increased the number of female applicants for one Textio client by two and a half times. That is because presumably they prefer the truth. Indeed recommends companies use job listings that actually describe the position, which is definitely better than patronizing people. There's an E. coli outbreak linked to leafy greens reported in 15 states, and the CDC revealed more than 55 cases of illness and at least one death. Until health officials finish investigating, consumer reports suggest you avoid eating romaine lettuce. And January 15th, we celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Keep in mind that the stock market, most banks, the DMV, the post office, and public schools are closed for the day. And finally, check out this amazing clip of Julia Louis-Dreyfus's sons celebrating her last day of chemotherapy. Don't wanna see you, bitch, you better disappear. The fire's in their eyes and their works are really clear, so beat it. Yeah, what they said, beat it, cancer. Let's go to the New York Stock Exchange for our Fox Business Minute with Lauren Simonetti today. Lauren, I hear that Facebook is making major changes. That's right, Richard. Facebook making big changes to how its news feed works. Soon you're going to see more status updates from your friends and your family that will spark meaningful social exchanges on the site. Now, on the flip side, Facebook is going to de-emphasize news articles and anything that's published by brands. Get this, General Motors will make an autonomous car without a steering wheel and without pedals by 2019, next year. The plan is to deploy the self-driving cars as ride-hailing vehicles in a number of cities uh, across the U.S. start to experiment with this. Everybody's looking for a fatter paycheck, Richard, and those changes to your paycheck that the government promised you after it passed the tax law, they're coming soon. The IRS is rolling out new guidelines for how much bosses should withhold from workers. And Lauren, when can we expect to see these changes? Well, businesses across the country must adopt the changes by February 15th. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> that means employees can start to see the changes reflected in their take-home pay pretty soon. More Top 30 when we return. A growing number of Russian women are flocking to Miami, but not just any Russian women, pregnant Russian women seeking U.S. citizenship for their newborn children. Russian Ekaterina Kuznetsova said in an interview, it's really common. When I was taking the plane to come here, it was not only me, it was four or five women flying here. A trip to Miami can cost the women tens of thousands of dollars, but they say it's worth it. Olesia Rashatova said, American passport is a big plus for the baby. Why not? 
It's all legal because the 14th Amendment says anyone born in the United States is automatically a citizen. And in turn, once they hit the age of 21, that child can then sponsor their parents' application for a green card. While there's no official data on birth tourism in the United States, Jackson Health System said international maternity patients represented 8% of all patients giving birth last year in Miami. Richard, you have some concerning news now about a popular app? Yes, that's right, Kristen. An app that is supposed to make dog walking more convenient may reveal its users' personal information. WAG is a smartphone app that lets users summon dog walkers to their house or schedule one for the future. Pet owners leave keys in a lockbox secured by a code so that WAG walkers can enter their home while they are out. The Wall Street Journal reports that private customer information was posted to pages on the company's website. The startup confirmed that a technical glitch exposed what they said was certain limited personal information online. That included customers' first names, last initials, home addresses, and crucially, the code to the lockbox containing their house key. A spokesperson for WAG told Fast Company, we have no reason to believe that the information was misused, no social security numbers or financial data were exposed. It is not the first controversy for the startup. Top 30 previously reported that the company has been accused of losing several clients' dogs. It is time now for Royal Watch with The Sun. Let's check in with the legendary Arthur Edwards, The Sun's royal photographer for 40 years. He is in London. Arthur, welcome back. Thank you, Rich. It's nice to be back. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle made their first public appearance of this year in London. What happened? Well, they went to uh, Brixton, which is a predominantly black area, and they went crazy. And, uh, and she was so brilliant. You know, she blew kisses to the crowd. I mean, something I've never seen a member of the royal family ever do, blow kisses to the crowd, but she was doing this, and there was screaming and shouting. It was, she must have thought she was a, a premier. Arthur, Princess Charlotte started nursery on Monday. That's right. Then Catherine uh, issued two fantastic pictures of her daughter, and she looked so grown up. And only just at Christmas time, they issued a picture of the four of them, and Catherine looked such a baby in it, but suddenly, a month later, and she's sparkling, and, you know, a mother takes the best pictures of her children because she sees them when they're at their best. You know, you love the family, and, and you know, that always comes across. Who's your least favourite royal? Princess Anne. <laughs> Princess Anne treats photographers like telegraph poles. You know, she just walks around them. <laughs> ignores them. I love the fact you had an immediate answer. Thank you very much. Love you. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you. In a story with echoes of Tonya Harding, a Japanese kayaker has been banned from competition after he admitted to spiking an Olympic rival's drink. 32-year-old Yasuhiro Suzuki put a banned drug in teammate Seiji Komatsu's drink before a race, hoping to boost his chances of qualifying for the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. Initially, his plan worked when Komatsu was disqualified from the race, but the decision was turned around when they found out Suzuki had drugged him. Japan's anti-doping agency has banned Suzuki for eight years, while Japan's Canoe Federation is considering a lifetime ban. Which brings me to an important point. I have just seen the Tonya Harding film, I, Tonya, and it's excellent. And in a few years, you'll be able to see the follow-up set in Japan. A classified airline that runs commuter flights into one of the most protected and secretive regions in the country is hiring new flight attendants. A mysterious airline named Janet, which some claim stands for just another non-existent terminal, flies between Las Vegas and Area 51, presumably dropping off employees at the top secret military base. According to the ad placed by AECOM, applicants must be level-headed and clear thinking while handling unusual incidents and situations, like severe weather conditions, including turbulence, delays due to weather or mechanicals, hijackings or bomb threats, you know, the usual. So if you're not familiar, Area 51 is where conspiracy theorists speculate the government keeps alien spacecraft and conducts experiments on those alien life forms. The CIA says it's simply a testing ground for the Air Force. Either way, if you're into travel, being sworn to secrecy and aliens, this job is for you. 
President Trump took to Twitter to deny calling Africa and Haiti s-hole countries, even though others in the room are confirming that he said it. The Washington Post first reported the story saying several senators were in the Oval Office discussing a bipartisan immigration deal with the president. When he asked them why the US would accept immigrants from s-hole countries like Haiti or in Africa, rather than in places like Norway. The president responded via Twitter saying, the language used by me at the DACA meeting was tough, but this was not the language used. Senator Dick Durbin, a Democrat from Illinois, was in the Oval Office for the meeting. Uh, he says the media reports of Trump's comments are accurate, and he called the language hate-filled, vile, and racist. Republican Congresswoman Mia Love is Haitian-American. She tweeted a statement describing how her parents came here from Haiti and demanded the president apologize. So, in summary, President Trump has either done nothing wrong or said something racist and lied about it. In today's hometown stories from Fox 10 Phoenix, utility workers from Arizona-based SRP Water and Power just returned home from a month-long deployment in Puerto Rico. They were tasked with helping restore power to the island's devastated power grid in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. Workers arrived in Puerto Rico in early December, nearly two months after the storm, but they were still shocked to see the amount of damage firsthand. Nationally, I don't think any power utility has ever had to go through what they've gone through. Now that they've returned, a new group of SRP workers will head to the island to continue the work. In our second story from Fox 46 Charlotte, 76-year-old Marine Corps veteran Addison Barber served in Vietnam and was awarded a Purple Heart. Now partially disabled after a stroke, Barber is confined to his home and has struggled to pay his bills. He's been without heat since June. But his former caregiver, Holly Schmidt, organized a fundraiser to help Barber stay warm. She's now raised over over $2,000 and heat has been restored to his home. As for Barber, he just has two words to say. Thank you. In our final story from Fox 9 Minneapolis, Breezy Point, Minnesota police officer and paramedic Jason Reber was driving home after a shift when he noticed the smell of smoke in the air. He pulled over and discovered a house with its roof on fire. He called for backup and after breaking down the door, they rescued an elderly couple with health issues who were sleeping inside. Homeowner Cynthia Rasmussen told Fox 9 the officers who rescued them were angels. A new series from National Geographic takes a closer look at the battle to crush ISIS. They have unprecedented access to the commanders inside the Pentagon and the soldiers fighting on the front lines. The series, Chain of Command, shows everything from the complex overseas assignments to their private lives at home. Here's a preview in today's Nat Geo Minute. A camera has never been allowed to film inside the cockpit of an F-22 on a mission until now. In the very close fight from the uh, tactical level, we basically look for any warehouse that may have held their weapons, uh, command and control nodes, vehicle-borne IED factories. Those targets were all de developed over the last month, and then we started dropping bombs on them to ensure that any target that we knew had been out there, we took it out. Watch Chain of Command on Nat Geo Monday at 9, 8 central. Drake is opening a new restaurant in his hometown of Toronto, and he celebrated by using the venue to help LeBron James throw a surprise birthday party for Dwayne Wade. Drake's new hotspot is called Pick Six, and it's located in the heart of Toronto's tourist-friendly stretch on Young Street. A publicist for the rapper says they're preparing for the grand opening, but there's no set date yet. The space is described as chic and sophisticated, with teal velvet chairs, gold accents, and black marble walls. Fun fact, Toronto was originally divided into six cities, Toronto, Scarborough, North York, Etobicoke, York, and East York. In 1998, they combined to make Toronto. So now some locals refer to the city as the Six. So Drake's new restaurant name is a nod to his hometown's nickname. 
When Pastor Donald Parrish Jr. realized he needed male volunteers for a Breakfast with Dad event, he turned to social media hoping he'd get a few responses. Parrish said he expected 50 responses tops, but was wowed when over 600 men replied to his Facebook post. According to USA Today, Parrish said, we know that the majority of our students were not going to have dads present. But within days, the response was so overwhelming, it crashed the website that conducts the background checks of potential volunteers. Over 600 men from all walks of life made history by deciding to volunteer as male mentors for the children of Billy Earl Day Middle School in South Dallas. Dallas Assistant Police Chief Jason Rodriguez tweeted, words cannot describe the impact mentoring youth can have on both you and your mentee. It's always great to see people stepping up to help. Scientists are trying to figure out a space mystery involving an intense blast of energy from outside the galaxy. These blasts are called fast radio bursts, or FRBs, and lead to a flash of light in space that lasts only milliseconds. Astronomers don't know what causes them, and none have ever repeated until recently. FRB 121102 has repeated more than 150 times since it was first detected in 2012. That has allowed researchers to gather more information on it, and they believe it originates three billion light years from Earth. In other words, if you traveled at the speed of light, it would take you three billion years to get there, a distance that is so great, it is thrilling and completely impossible to comprehend. A private American company has been hired to search for Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. The Boeing chair, as I'm sure you'll recall, vanished over the Indian Ocean on March the 8th, 2014. There were 239 people on board. Its fate is one of aviation's biggest mysteries. The Malaysian government could pay the Houston-based Ocean Infinity up to $70 million if they find the plane or its flight recorders, but the company has just 90 days to do it. Searchers hope new technology will give them the edge in the form of autonomous underwater vehicles, which are basically underwater drones. The governments of Malaysia, China and Australia searched the ocean for nearly three years at an expense of $157 million before admitting defeat. The search was called off early last year, but many victims' families begged authorities to continue. The company's ship, called the Seabed Constructor, is on its way to the search area as we speak. Studies suggest when it comes to making a great first impression, having a nice smile can naturally increase confidence, which is why we've got today's top 30 deal, activated coconut natural charcoal teeth whitening powder at a special 73% discount. The combination of the natural charcoal powder and the activated coconut eliminates impurities while removing stains from tea, coffee, tobacco, and other foods. It has no added chemicals, making it a safe and effective way to clean and polish teeth, while also protecting gums and enamel. And not only that, the whitening powder brightens the yellowing effects of aging, while naturally polishing teeth for an organic smile that everyone will remember. Activated Coconut Natural Charcoal Teeth Whitening Powder retails for as much as $144. But today you can buy it for just 39 bucks. That's again, about a 73% discount. And you can get this right now at top30deals.com while they last. The American Kennel Club has announced the addition of two new breeds to the AKC family. The Netherlands Quaker Hanze and the Grand Basset Griffin Van de Haan join the exclusive club of AKC purebred canines, bringing the overall number of breeds recognized by the AKC to 192. Netherlands Quaker Hanze is a favorite of Dutch nobility and is joining the sporting group. The breed originated in Europe as a duck hunter, so they need regular mental and physical activity to stay happy. They're friendly, energetic dogs with generally good health. The Grand Basset Griffin Van de Haan originated in France for the purposes of rabbit and hare hunting and is joining the hound group. They're a laid back breed that generally gets along with other dogs. They're hard workers with a high activity level, so they need a lot of exercise. Starting this year, both breeds will be able to compete as show dogs, so we're excited to see their debut at the Westminster Dog Show. Bellevue University, a private school in Nebraska, has only one freshman on its men's golf team. Oh, and he's 61 years old. Don Byers, himself a grandfather, might be one of the oldest athletes in the history of collegiate athletics. His real life back to school scenario started off as a joke with his golfing buddy, who also happens to be the coach of Bellevue's men's golf team. 
After Byers played a particularly good round, Coach Rob Brown jokingly asked if he still had any collegiate eligibility. Well, it turns out he did. Since Bellevue competes in the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics, which has different eligibility requirements than the NCAA, Byers, who never went to college, was still eligible to play, as long as he enrolled as a full-time student. Now, in addition to his job as an insurance agent, Byers is finally working on getting that college degree by taking online courses at Bellevue. And he can't wait for his team's next golf tournament coming up in March. Hey, Richard, what's coming up on our next show? Kristen, we're talking about lowering the cost of living. Housing is the biggest expense for many Americans, but there may be ways for them to save some money. And some of the ideas airlines have tried to win new customers over the year have failed with good reason. Plus, this Canadian woman overcame abuse, addiction, and homelessness, and now she drives the largest truck in the world. All coming up on the next Top 30.